Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by the Romford Pele here in Dublin, Ireland, Ray Parlour. You're here with Elevate Events. We're here in the Clayton Hotel. Um, I suppose you're in Dublin and what are your fondest memories of Ireland? Well, I love Ireland. I mean, I've been here a few times and uh, always having a great, great crack as you guys do. Uh, always great fun uh, going out. I love a pint of Guinness. I always have Guinness. I don't. I drink Guinness at like you know around the winter time in in England, but round in in Ireland, it's a great pint of Guinness as well. So uh, great to be back. And I know we've got lots of fans out here, Arsenal fans. So it's really nice to come and say hello and you know some pictures done and you know just say thanks for su support over the years. Really. Yeah, I suppose looking back on your Arsenal career, what are your fondest memories? Do you know what? It was a dream come true to play for Arsenal. I signed when I was very young, 12, about 12 years old. So I went through the ranks and, you know, Sunday team. I played for the Sunday team and then I left. Uh, a lot of us left at 14. We had to play full time for Arsenal uh, on a Sunday. Uh, and in 16, you, you obviously get your apprenticeship. And it's still a dream come true to try and get in that first team. It's a really long, hard ro uh, road to get there. But once you get there, it's such a great experience. And, uh, you know, my favourite memory was making my debut, really, because I'm, suddenly I'm playing in front of 50,000 people instead of 200. Uh, but, you know, if you're going to go certain games, you've got to be the cup final because that was a big, big game in England. Uh, that was the only live game on TV when I was growing up as a kid. So my da mum and dad made me watch my brothers, watch every single cup final. So to score a goal in one was a very special day. And obviously that week we beat Manchester United as well to win a double. So that's probably the best week of my life in football um, concerns. And, you know, you, you never can take that away for us now. And obviously... Very lucky, Invincibles as well. You know, so many great years I had at Arsenal Football Club and I was gutted when I had to leave, but it always comes to an end sooner or later. And, um, you know, when I left, I left in really good terms with, with the club itself and, you know, I've got so many fond memories of the club. Talk to me about the, the Invincibles and a little bit about that rivalry with Man United that made, I suppose, the Premier League what it was. It was so intense and everybody looked forward to those games because you just knew everything was going to be left on the line in those well, games. Well, you, you had winners on Manchester United. You didn't like losing. You had a lot of winners on Arsenal didn't like losing. So that's why they, they were so fierce. But, you know, it, it was a game that we always, when the fixture list come out, that was the first game you looked at. You know, when we were playing Manchester United home and away. Spurs was a big game for the fans because it's a North London derby. But we knew Manchester United was our big game. If we could get four points out of um, the two games, we got a chance to win the league. That's how it was. Liverpool wasn't as good as they are now. Man City wasn't even in the league. Um, so it was always Arsenal, Manchester United. But it was great, great games to play in, you know. You always had to win that first tackle. And after the game, like, look, all the guys had ice packs on their ankles and knees. And, and I'm sure Manchester United players would have been the same. But it was a real, you know, everything you've got, you've got to play well to get a result against Man United. And Man United probably probably been the same. And it was great rival between to both managers, Ferguson and Arsene Wenger. Uh, and, it, you know, it, it was a really, really good game to play in, I promise you. Yeah, a lot of people obviously hold Roy Keane in high regard here in Ireland. What was he like to play against? Oh, he's a brilliant player. Really, really important player for Manchester United. Um, you know, their, their midfield was really, really strong. You know, Paul Scholes alongside Roy, and then you had Ryan Giggs on the left, you had Beckham on the right. So that was a really where we had to win the battle sometimes in that midf midfield. We've seen the spats with Patrick Vieira and Roy. And, but, it's you know... It's since made up. Basically. Yeah, of course they have. I mean, you're playing for your shirt. You're playing to win the game. So they're going to get out of hand sometimes. In, in a match and uh, don't get me wrong sometimes they went over the top and we went over the top a little bit too much uh, but that was the rivalry between both clubs uh, but Roy was a, a brilliant player very very important player for all the trophies that Manchester United won definitely yeah and just kind of obviously you played with so many tremendous players in that time like Thierry Henry uh, Dennis Bergkamp Patrick Vieira yeah. um, but kind of just talk to me a little bit about that team and the, the winning dynamic of that team well, I think, you know, Arsene Wenger, when he first came into the club, he was he was pretty lucky because he had a great back six. I call him a back six. And it was like a brick wall. You know, you had Tony Adams, you had Steve Bowl, Martin Keown, you had Lee Dixon, Nigel Winterburn and David Seaman. So that was the basis. And then what he did there, and he brought in a couple of flair players, uh, brought in Mark over Mars, he had Petit in midfield, he brought in Anelka. Um, and suddenly we really started playing well uh, and he had already good players there already. You know, Burkamp was already there. You know, you had Ian Wright coming to end of his career, but he's still a very, very important player. 
But, you know, those players were different class and they learned how important it was to wear an Arsenal shirt. And I think going forward, I think Patrick and all them guys, he ended up being skipper when Tony Adams left the club and he knew the, the importance of every game. And uh, I think the British guys were very much involved in that uh, because we didn't let them get away with anything. If there wasn't, if they was having a bad game or wasn't putting it all in, they get told straight away. And, and I think they really responded to that. And, and probably thank you, because that's what you needed if you wanted to be a successful side. Yeah, talk to me about your favourite teammates and who your favourite teammates to play with. Yeah, well... Have well, you had one specifically for No, away. I mean, I've roomed with Merce. I'm here with him today as well, Merce. I've roomed him for you. He taught me how to gamble really badly. Uh, and then I had Tony Adams for for eight or nine years. He taught me how to drink. So I don't know how I made it really, but it's a situation where they all, I promise you now, I've gotten with everybody. I was very easy to get on with. I mean, I used to muck about a little bit too much sometimes, but when you had to work, you really worked. I mean, Wenger wouldn't let, let you get away with that, but he also liked you having a bit of fun. And I think the, the guys always responded to the fun as well. After training, we'd sit down and have, have lunch together, have a bit of fun, you know. And um, I, I, I got them with every single player. The foreign guys were brilliant. They really enjoyed the banter because they used to tell me when they come from Italy, you know, they'd do their training and go straight home. In France, they'd do the same. But in England, we made sure everybody stuck together, learn each other's characters, learn about people's families, which is very important if you're going to be successful. Uh, and I think in the end, they loved it. They really did love hanging around and having a bit of fun and you know and you know that that's why we were successful successful as well because you know we was all together as a team and if someone's having a bad game we're trying to help them out yeah drag them through the yeah through absolutely the, the, um is there any funny uh, stories you can tell us from room with tony adams or is it suitable no, for the not really i mean tony was a, a real a proper 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 um, player proper skipper um you know and he he, he always said Play for the front, play for the badge on the front of the shirt, and you know, people always remember the name on the back. And that's that's always I've gone, gone with me a little bit. You play for the, for Arsenal Football Club as much as hard as you can, and they'll always remember your name on the back. But you know we had we had lots of fun back in the day, but not really where I could sit here for two hours and talk about it. it was, you know drinking stories and but in that era every club was doing it, yeah. and I think it started to get more professional, uh, especially when the foreign guys come over. Uh, and 96, probably when it started to change and, you know, where Premier League, Premiership was getting bigger. Uh, and then we had to toe the line a little bit more than we did when I first got into the scene. Yeah, I suppose that brings me into kind of modern day now, you know, looking at that Arsenal team. Yeah. We did say we get you again. Oh, so, look yeah. at that. Beautiful. Um, so in modern day kind of football, what do you think Arsenal need now to push City all the way this season I don't think they're too far away no so. not too far not too far at all I think they need City to drop off a little bit um, but they, they need to improve again they have they did last year that really was very good the atmosphere is brilliant over the Emirates at the moment can't get no better all the fans there's a real connection with the players and, and, the, and the fans which is very important um, but Edu I know very well obviously from um, the playing days he used to be in our team in, in Invincibles and he probably knows what sort of players they need. Strike has always been the highlight, but you know they're getting away with it at the moment. Havertz has done a great job since he's come into the club. Um, but you know, I think the midfield is going to be interesting because I think Partey probably will leave, and they probably need another midfielder in there where it gives a license for Declan Rice to get forward that little bit more. Uh, but they're not too far away. They've got Timber back now. Um, he had a horrendous injury last year, Cruciate. He's like another new signing as well. They've got the Italian guy come in. Califuri. Yeah, Califuri, who's a really good defender. Also can play on the left and play centre-half. So there's options at the back now. And they're pretty solid last year. So I think if they can get another midfielder, maybe find that striker. It's very difficult to find a really top-class striker at the moment. Then they could be really, really close to, to, to beating, beating Man City. Because they're ageing a bit. De Bruyne is one of their best players and he's another year older uh, but he's still a, a quality quality player the only thing I would say about City is they sold their bench striker for 80 million so they're going to go and spend that on someone else I, we, I wish he was coming to Arsenal <laughs> Alvarez that would have been a good signing but yeah I mean look City are an unbelievable team you know to go to win the Premier League for four years running is, is remarkable and they're going to go for the five it's hard to retain your title about winning it four times running so respect that to, to Man City they're the ones to beat at the moment uh, and Arsenal just got to go and give it that all and you know learn from your mistakes a little bit from last season and the season before which they did uh, and, and need a little bit of luck along the way and, and hopefully that, that'll be enough to win the title next year and just lastly on the Arsenal team now 
Um, who are some of your kind of favourite players that you like seeing? Well, I think the two centre halves have been brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Saliba and Gabriel, really good partnership. I love Odegaard. I think in midfield, he always wants the ball tight areas. A little bit like Dennis Bergkamp, what we had. Uh, I won't put in that oh, bracket yet. Man. I won't put him in the bracket yet. But Odegaard is certainly going that way. Um, I think Declan Weiss was a great signing. Really pleased that they got him. They they showed a little bit of intent now by paying that 105 million, which probably 10 years ago they wouldn't do. Uh, but I, I, I really do do like you know that area of Saka on the right hand side. Ben White's been a great signing. You know he's solid at right back. But I, I really enjoy watching them now. I really do. I mean they're a really good, exciting team to watch. And I think Mikel Arteta has done a great job just to keep the the efficiency going, the work rate going because you, you you won't win nothing with no work rate. And I think that's what he's brought to the team now. When they haven't got the ball, they've got to work hard to get it back, and uh, that could be the difference as well. Mm, and just you touched on Dennis Bergkamp, and I hear so many Arsenal players that play with him. Like was he as good? Does everybody's or, or even better? Yeah, I mean, he was a brilliant player, really was. Um, he came into the club 1996, 95, I think, 95, 96, okay, yeah. just before Arsene Wenger come. But the quality he had, the, the training methods, what he'd done, he, he's professional, he used to practice on his own after training. And I think he, he showed a lot of the British guys, especially how to behave, not, not behave, but how to train that little bit hard if you're going to get better. Uh, but, you know, I played with, I think, Henri and him, one and two in the history of Arsenal Football Club, if I'm being honest. So I was just very, very fortunate that I played in that sort of era to play with the two best players probably ever to play for Arsenal. Yeah, and now you're here tonight to tell stories about playing with them and obviously your career yeah. here tonight. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what it's all about. We got some, me and Mercer got some good stories later on, so we'll have a bit of fun. And Liam as well, you know, obviously he's an Irish legend and uh, a great guy and a great player for Arsenal Football Club. He'd be one, of, he'd be in the top ten, definitely the best players he's ever played for Arsenal. For Ireland. Yeah, absolutely. So what a player, you know. To, I remember the story about Liam going to Juventus, obviously, and he said, "Ray, I'm leaving, but someone's taking my position." I said, "Who's that, Liam? Platini." So you know, if you're going to go out on a high you want someone like Platini to take your shirt and uh, that just showed you how good he was absolutely well listen Ray I'm going to let you enjoy your Cheers point out. thanks so much awesome. sorry